Welcome to Sea Line Island. A popular tourist destination located southeast of the Falkland Islands archipelago. In 2001 it was designated a Ramsar site and as an important bird area. More recently in 2017 the island was listed as a national nature reserve. Its popularity stems from the stunning scenery and wildlife here at Sea Lion Island. There is also a stunning cosy lodge where people can stay which is managed by Wild Falkland Islands Limited, which is leased by the Falkland Islands Development Corporation. So the company is um, set up really to, to sort of run the sort of the lodge here, the tourism side, but also some of the environmental um, aspects of the island as well and the conservation um, sort of aspects of managing Sea Lion Island. The lodge uses some renewable energy sources such as wind and solar power, as well as arranging an annual weekend trip for a small number of volunteers to plant tussock grass in heavily eroded areas. For us, tussock planting, it's not only, it's ticketing a lot of boxes, it's not only we sort of restoring the eroded areas, we're also giving more habitat to the, to the birds and the, um, the insects, the animals that, that sort of live here and use the tussock. Um, and then we're also globally sort of helping by um, making a difference with our tussock um, and carbon. For the majority of the 20th century, the island was a large farm, containing a high quantity of sheep. As time has gone by, the sheep had reduced in number, until in 2008, Bob, the last sea lion sheep, left the island. Now having a sheep farm might have been economical and perhaps even necessary, but this rendered huge amounts of land where tussock grass would have grown, barren and more susceptible to the environmental processes. I think the last two people who farmed Sea Lion Island um, saw the benefit of having good tussock stands and, and fenced it and at least managed it around their farming operations. So having, having 15, 20 people come here for, for two days planting tussock, we get an amazing amount of tussock planted. Um, and, and we have a fa fairly good success rate in plant surviving. In a latest study conducted by Falcons Conservation, the Falcons Tussock captures an estimated 2.3 million tonnes of atmospheric carbon. There is also further potential to offset 1 million tonnes of carbon in areas of eroded peat that is suitable to plant tussock. To put that into perspective, that is about 2,300,000 2, UK to Falcons passenger return flights. The procedure of planting tussock is fairly routine. So we find a nice healthy tussock which is quite big and, and looks good and then we'll pull like a handful or a clump of, of tussock tillers as they're known um, straight from the bog and if you pull it right, <laughs> not too much force, you should be able to pull it away and it comes away with the roots at its base. And then we take the tussock from wherever we pulled it to wherever we want to plant it and it's just as simple as just, um, yes, yeah, sort or of creating a sort of a bit of a hole in the ground, pushing the tiller in and trying to get it in as deep as you can so those roots are sort of quite deep. Um, and then stamping around it to make sure it's firmly in. <laughs> so the geese don't pull it up or the wind doesn't sort of, um, yeah, pull it out. The Sea Lion Island Lodge has said that since 2013, over 17 hectares of tussock grass has been planted. But unfortunately, there has been one unwanted guest that has arrived on these shores. The thistles here are a sow thistle. Um, they have a small yellow flower on. Um, and they were discovered on the, the island uh, to the northeast um, of, of the lodge. Um, probably last season, I uh, found a patch. Um, and this season, we've been trying to kind of impact, um, survey the area, find out how much there is um, and make a start on, on clearing them. For the first time, volunteers have also been helping pulling thistles out of the ground to prevent the invasive species from continuing to spread. 
you know, you have to try and clear as much as you can. And the, the point of this time of year is trying to clear those small plants that will be viable early next season um, and try and get as many of the seed heads um, removed as possible. Um, and where that wasn't possible, we were inverting the plants so that the seed heads were staying in the region rather than blowing further over the island. So it's trying to contain it in the known area, um, which we can then continue to, to monitor over the coming seasons. This is the first time the watch group have planted tussock on the island, an initiative Falklands Conservation hopes to continue with. A couple of years ago, FITV's Caroline Scott with the watch group helped plant tussock at Beaver Pond, which has had some positive results. So a lot of the tussock we planted at Beaver Pond, even three or four years ago, it's now already sort of making its own babies, as it were, and self-seeding. Um, and these, of course, are spreading, so the more tussock, the more it self-seeds. But also you can see in areas that tussock can act as a bit of a windbreak as well. So where we've planted tussock in some areas, um, it, it kind of acts as a, a, a physical barrier. So as the wind is blowing peat or other uh, eroded areas, it's kind of capturing that, that peat. Um, and then it's creating sort of more, more peat around the tussock and other plants can get in there as well. So it kind of gives a, a foothold um, for other, other sort of plants to take off as well. To the already planted tussock bogs already pose a home for small birds, sea lions and penguins. But his hope that the volunteers of this trip, the impact will be seen several years later. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it is good. Um, certainly when you sort of see a, a patch of ground that's completely barren to all intents and purposes, um, to actually have spent the next couple of hours literally planting, um, it's quite nice to see, the, you know, the tusks are sort of blowing in the wind and sort of filling up with a little bit more greenery. We sometimes sort of end up sort of pigeonholed in Stanley. It's nice, nice to get out and as I say, see some other parts of the island. And the good thing about the volunteering is you're actually going to a part of the island that you wouldn't necessarily go to. Um, so instead of just going to the rock hoppers or the gentoos or whatever, you're actually seeing other parts that um, wouldn't be on the normal tour, so to speak. For 2021, the thistles have been pulled, the tillers planted and the tussock birds moved into their new home. The lodge will also be shut during the winter months, but the tussock plants will be monitored for the next year. And we may have to look at some different ways of planting or different plants to plant um, in certain areas. But the most important thing is to get, well, fairly important to get some vegetation on the ground. Obviously, you don't want to go planting invasive species, but um, yeah, you, you, you know, tussock is a good habitat um, plant.